Renzo, what's up? What's up, Renzo? Just just joining the nice crowd. Ah, oh, he wants to have, ask his own questions, just... I'm sure. <laughs> hey, Hello, everyone. Hey, Javier. Excellent. Everybody's here. Let's get this party started then. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to be asking uh, questions to Marcus, and Jordan's going to be asking questions to Tovier, although I get a feeling that that might end up being mixed up around, but I'm sure we'll all have fun while we're doing this. Um, all right, so I'll start with an ice icebreaker for Marcus. So um, is there something interesting or curious on the desk around you that you'd like to share? I, I brought my lucky pick. Which, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it helped me get through those 10 years of, of being on the trading desk and uh, working on you get You tend to get superstitious when you do those kind of things. And uh, yeah, it's still with me and uh, brings me luck. Excellent. Thank you. Right. Jordan. Okay. And I would like to have you first clarify exactly how to pronounce your name, Tovier. Is that... I think you've got it basically right. It's even hard for people in my country to pronounce, but I, I, I pronounce it Tovier. Yeah. Okay, Tovier. Uh, same icebreaker question to you. Is there something around you or in your surroundings you'd like to share? Any fun facts about you you'd like to share? Um, not in, in my surroundings, but a fun fact about me is I, I do like to do some gardening when I'm not coding. Yes. Oh, what's your favorite thing to garden? Um, basically make a lawn and clear out the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cathartic. You can come around to my house if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay. Let's have the first question for Marcus. Um, so, uh, CLJ tiles, I, I think this is a wonderful project. I'm just curious about what your inspiration for creating it is. You've mentioned kind of, uh, breaking that crack into how lecturers teach physics. Was that one of the things that drove you there? Yeah, exactly. So I started with uh, learning general relativity. And uh, there is this wonderful book, uh, Functional Differential Geometry, right? So to show it from Gerald Sussman and Jack Wisdom. And uh, I, I started to learn it. and. Uh, um, and had to install Emacs and uh, all those tooling. And I, I thought, well, it, it takes quite a while, especially on Windows machines. And five years ago, it was even more difficult. And so I thought, well, it takes uh, quite a while uh, to someone can start really to, to learn the, the physics part of it. And I thought, well, there needs to be something done about it to, to get physicists um, more into this kind of, of understanding their own subject. And uh, as, I, as I said in the talk, it's very understandable that uh, scientists, they, they don't pick up tools very easily that are not known to them because they, they have their tools and, and are used to them and know how to use them. And so it, it needs to be made, made easy, not only simple, but easy. And that's, that's really what I, what I uh, was up to when, when starting uh, with this project, right? Excellent. Thank you. All right, and I just want to remind everybody in the audience, there are several ways to get your questions on the docket. We'd prefer that you just raise your hand in Zoom and then you can ask your question directly, or you can put it in the Discord channel or you can write it in the Zoom chat. Okay, so next question for Tovier. So kind of same thing, what, what inspired you to get, out, get into all of this? Were, uh, were you exposed to sick P or sick M first? Well, um, the inspiration is I did my undergraduate in mechanical engineering, so I had some exposure to physics. I've not read the SIGP book. I've started reading the SIGM book. And because of my exposure to physics, I, I'm interested in math and physics equations. I watch uh, maybe YouTube videos where I see equations. And sometimes I would like to play around with these. And when I saw the 
SICM Utils Library in Clujo. Since I'm also in interested in Clujo, I thought this was a good intersection of interests. I could get to uh, analyze these equations right from within Clujo. And also another factor is there are a few Clujo developers here in Nigeria. So I joined, I looked for online communities to join and there was the SCM Utils community. So that got me going meeting other closure risks and discussing the book. And when the suggestion came about to give a talk at this conference, I was happy to get, get involved. Oh, wonderful. Good to hear from you. So uh, back to John with Marcus. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so there is a question from Discord from Jakob. Uh, he's asking if you've have you tried uh, the puzzles approach with any of the students yet? And, and if so, how did it go? Yeah, that's the LACMUS test and that's uh, still missing. So the answer is no, but uh, I tried. So there is, um, I'm, I'm based in Vienna, which is not in Australia, no kangaroos here. <laughs> and uh, uh, there is an, an uh, institute for the uh, physics, for, for teaching physics the tactics of physics and I went there and, and showed them uh, my project and they were very helpful and friendly but the thing is um, they said well we are only doing grammar school level so um, your project is, is very very nice and everything but still we don't have students for you to to try it out you would need to you would need to uh, lower the level of your of your content and uh, and uh, then it, it it would be possible but uh, I'm, I'm not really sure I, if I if I want to go down that road and on the other hand um, I talked to university people and uh, they said well we have Mathematica here so we are right. teaching with Mathematica and I say, well, yeah, it's uh, open source and everything. I say, yeah, that, that, that's that's the same the same point all over again. They have their tools and they work. And um, so, answer is no. I tried. Um, I, I will I will take any chance I can get. But um, you know, the tool is there. It's there for a reason. Um, and uh, maybe there is my lucky pick. <laughs> and uh, I still got this far, right? So the next talk is by Gerald Sussman. I never thought I'm going to get this far uh, with my project, which is something. And uh, I'm still knocking on wood uh, that uh, someday someone uh, will come up and say, yeah, I'll, I'll try to show this, this to my students. But it didn't happen yet. Yes, well, I, I'm with you with the pig. I, I wish you all the success in that range and uh, yeah a lot of people are you learning a lot more outside of university now so maybe there's like a community that will pick that up outside of uh, university as well and the thing is the thing is uh I've, I've, obviously I've, i have some friends uh, from from my physics studying days they, they are at university uh, and and even their students mostly uh, learn mechanics the usual newtonian way and until they come to this Lagrangian way, I'm, uh, that's, uh, that takes some time. And uh, so that's, that's another, another issue um, that, that uh, it, is, it is a way of, of teaching. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all in for it, right? And then I'm, I'm sure many, many are, but finding students uh, is, is, well, yeah, but, but that's why I'm here uh, actually to, to present. Yes, and let's hope all uh, many of our students get a chance to kind of see this video and uh, and see what they're missing out on. Thank you. Okay, Jordan. another one for Tovia here. So it sounds like you are familiar with Sam Ritchie and his work he's done porting SICM to Closure Script. Uh, how how much have you worked with him? To what extent? Well, the. Mostly so far, the extent I've worked with him is consuming his work. But I'm starting to uh, get more involved. For example, the SICM Utils group I mentioned earlier, we met several times earlier this year to discuss the book and the library. And Sam was at those meetings. And of recent, I've 
taking a closer look at the library, not just consuming it you, and doing the exercises for and the book, but with a view to contributing as well. So uh, I hope to maybe get a PR merged into the library soon and make other more significant contributions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sam is a great guy and he would probably really appreciate that. He loves to work with the community. Okay, back to John and Marcus. Okay, um, so I'm quite curious how you actually built uh, CLJ tiles. Are there any particular libraries and tools that helped you build this project? Well, I mean, there is, of course, the uh, closure script part of the SICM library um, by Sam Ritchie and uh, Colin Smith did the closure, initially closure version. So that's without the port to closure script, the whole project would need to run on a server, obviously, and, and that's not necessary. So that, that was a precondition to be able to uh, deliver something like this. And then there is the Blockly library, which is maintained by Google. So these are, this is, it's basically a connection of those two. Everything else is uh, reagent, uh, standard closure script front end stuff. And as far as I can remember, nothing really more. Yeah, and the and the rendering of the evaluation results, that's quite nice. Is that some kind of math library? Ah, yes. Yes, that's uh, math checks. Um, nice. but the but the the, the tech that, that's actually that's a really low-hanging fruit because uh, the SICM library has all the all the tech technology uh, built into it. So it's just there was nothing to do for me to get all this uh, these nice results and output. It was already there. I just had to plug it together. So yeah, it's 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 just uh, really really it fits fits really. It it had to be done. <laughs> it just had to be done in in my opinion. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Jordan. So I'm actually going to let. I think this was a question from you, John. So I will let you ask about the uh, the use of clerk to Tovier. Oh, yes. So, yes, I, I did like, uh, I noticed you were using clerk in there. I just wondered um, yeah, what the learning experience was with clerk, uh, with clerk. Was it something that was new to you when you started or did you were already familiar with it? Using, I was new to clerk. I'd seen the presentations on other reclusion conference. So I was, it was on my radar. And uh, it was basically a choice between Node Space and Clark. Since I'm working with uh, Windows, WSL on Windows, Windows Subsystem for Linux. So I think for some reason, uh, Clark performed better there. So I chose Clark. And, uh, but once I picked Clark, there were no problems. It was very easy to get it going and get it working. Excellent. Thank you. You can go um, ahead and ask a question to Marcus now too, I guess, with putting all the work on John. Oh, making me work. <laughs> oh, it's it's getting late. So oh, yes, uh, what do we got next? Oh, um, um, yeah, I was quite interested in the error handling stuff. It's all, that look, looks very friendly. And that's one, obviously, one of the aspects of closure that people like pick up on as, as not being that useful. Um, is that quite, was that quite easy to create? Is that, is that kind of extensible? Yes. Is it just, yeah. Yeah. The next, the next thing is I, I forgot uh, the, the, of course, of course, uh, it's, it's the Babashka SCI. So the, the Babashka for closure script by, by uh, Mikhail Borkent, which of course, I mean, don't have to mention. Uh, everyone knows him, um, and without that, uh, I wouldn't have those error messages. It's, it's, uh, I, it, it would, I, I think it would have been much harder to implement all this thing with uh, self hosted closure script. So, the SCI interpreter again uh, delivers on that for free for me. So, it's, it's again an, another, another stone uh, helping me there, uh, without without any effort from my side. 
Yes. I, 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 what, I, what I'd like to mention, <laughs> if I have time, uh, the, the thing sure. is, uh, the, the uh, evaluation is, is not, not a REPL like evaluation. So it's more like a print line debugging. So the, the program runs through every time you, you do an inspection and, and get an error message. And uh, yes, SCI does it very nicely. Excellent. Thank you very much. Looks like we have a hand raised here, Mr. Egg, Mr. Egg Davis. Let's make sure he can unmute himself. Cool. Yeah. Um, so question for Marcus. Uh, I'm not familiar with Lagrangian mechanics, so it's possible my question is completely incoherent. Um, but I think that uh, when you made the distinction of, of the function L, that's the Lagrangian function? Yes. Yes, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so the... Um, uh, you talked about there being an issue there uh, where that was sort of distinguished from ordinary functions, right? The ordinary function tiles uh, where the function could not be removed from the function L's where it could. Do I, am I, do I have that correct? Yes. I mean, uh, what you are referring to is, I think, is that the usual way in CLJ tiles, you define functions is uh, is in a way where where the first part of, of this definition cannot be removed and only the arguments can re be removed from that block mm -hmm. and this is for convenience reasons for the mm -hmm. physicists who are familiar with with this kind of notation totally. um, and and it it kind of contradicts the Lisp tradition. And I, what I wanted to say in the talk is that I'm deliberately breaking the Lisp tradition in order to make it easier for scientists to slip into it. Mm -hmm. But for doing higher order functions, you actually need something that is more in the Lisp tradition. So I introduced another concept for higher order functions. Whereas in the Lisp language, everything is one concept. You don't make a distinction between calling a function. It's all Eden data. It's all one data. Code is data, right? And in, in CLJ ties, I break with this code is data paradigm in order for, for having this simpler expressions, having displayed in a more visually appealing way and in my in my uh, opinion, more easier way to read them. So it's it's only a, a, a well, not only the, the, the purpose of C, of CLJ tiles is to make things easier to read, and and that's why I, I had or, or I chose to break the, the Lisp tradition for simple function calls. I, I hope that answers your question. It has nothing to do with Lagrangians really or physics at all. Yeah. It's just. Mm -hmm how I distinguish between function calls and calls of higher order functions. Totally. If I'm, if I'm not taking up too much time here, organizers, please feel free to cut me off. But that was all sort of the lead up to my actual question, which was, um, that makes sense. Uh, but it seems like it does also sort of open space for user error. Uh, since they can remove that function and leave themselves in a, you know, a state that can't run. And what I'm curious about is whether giving functions or expressions, whether um, there's the possibility to use um, a different puzzle connector shape to distinguish those to prevent that user error. Is that something you've taken a look at? Ah, okay. Well, no, no. I, I, the, the idea is that, that you have puzzles and connect them and you can do whatever you like. Um, and, uh, and there is no, no prevention of, of, uh, for, for people to make errors. They, they should make errors. They can start all over. It's not for developing really. It's really for playing with puzzles and understanding physics. There, there would be the possibility to uh, kind of implement guardrails and things like that. And I started with, but that's, that I, I didn't figure out how to, there are so many combinations, what to prevent and how to do it. So 
I don't think I can ever find a solution to that. And um, I, I'm not so sure if that's really necessary to, to implement those guardrails. Another thing is if, if, if I have time, uh, there is uh, in, in, the, in the usual Parsons puzzle in computer science, you usually have a, a success message, right? You, you get a star or whatever. Yeah, you did it right. In, in CLJ tiles, that's not the case. You just do whatever you like with the puzzles and, and look at the and look at the um, result. And there is there is no way in this in this kind of high level physics area I, there is no way around grabbing the book, reading it, and 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 uh, understanding what's going on. I, I don't think or maybe well I I don't know how to how to uh, prevent errors in this kind of realm, so to say. So well, short, short answer, no. Yeah, you can thank do you so whatever much. you like. Thank you, Egg. Thank you. And so we are going to a question from Discord for Tovier. Having always resisted my colleagues' automatic MATLAB and Python recommendations, what is the comparison of capabilities available in SICM utils? Well, I'm not in a position to make a comparison. The extent of my use of MATLAB is for plotting graphs. So I've not used it for differentiating functions or solving equations. And I've not really made use of Python for solving equations as well. I, I made that statement mainly to point out that it is possible to do some of these operations within Clojure. So perhaps you are working at Clojure for most of the day and you see this interesting equation. Now there's no need to context switch. You can just pull in, pull in a closure library and continue your exploration from there. I'm sure uh, MATLAB and uh, yeah, maybe there's other Python tools that are, have many years to have built up a lot of functionality that the SICM utils library does not have right now, but um, with time and more community effort, I'm sure we'll catch up and uh, add all of those features to the SICM utils library as well. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna ask you one more question to OVA. So you said that the commu closure community is lacking there in Nigeria. Um, I'd love to hear what initially attracted you to closure and Lisp languages and what piqued your interest. Well, um, I, I started programming somewhere around 2017. And as a new programmer, I thought this could be easier. There was just a lot of stuff to learn. And somewhere along the line, I came across Rick Chiki's talk about simple made easy. I didn't really understand what he was talking about, but what hooked me in was the simple part. So at least someone was finally talking about how to make programming simpler. Now I understand that it's actually about not entangling all the parts of your, your program. So that got me interested. And uh, about a few years ago, I started trying to learn Clojure seriously and dig into it. And uh, about the, two years ago, also, I finally got a job working in Clojure. So since then, I've been continuing with Clojure. Great, thanks so much for that response. And over to you, John. Thank you very much, Jordan. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, Marcus, uh, if there are any features you still hope to add um, to CLJ tiles, uh, or if you're looking for pull requests. And you kind of mentioned it, it it's, might be quite challenging to add like different concepts outside of SICM. Is Can you give us some idea about what would actually be involved in that? Well, the, uh, as, as I tried to explain before, the, the most time spent um, on this project was for coming up with the example. Well, there are uh, 137 puzzles in there, so I couldn't I couldn't show them all. In the <laughs> yeah, so I that I put I put uh, 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 most of the effort was figuring out the puzzles. Uh, with with books from from getting closure from Russ Olson, uh, I, I took the first chapter and tried to make puzzles out of it, or closure for brave and true, 
And then there was, then I did some uh, uh, web programming as well, and then going on to higher order functions. And then uh, in, in the last 40 puzzles or so, it was really the, the, the hardcore Lagrangian physics stuff. So it's, it's building up and, and really meant to, to be that, that any, anyone can, can, who wants to learn closure can make the first 100 puzzles and learn closure and maybe omit the last 40 ones. And, and for the physicists, they can go on and make the last. Um, so the, the, the next steps wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, the technical advancements in, in the whole stack or something or, or, or uh, closure related. It would be really making more content um, and, uh, and, and refining the puzzles and, 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 and looking at the didactical side of things. Um, but the, Technically, at the at the moment, I don't I don't have any. We had before we had the discussions that maybe you can add guardrails, and I thought about uh, you know you have this 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 kind of gamification uh, things you very very get points when you do things right and so on, and, uh, and 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 some of my colleagues say yeah yeah to make it more popular just to do some gamification which 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 I think. Uh, is, is more called schoolification, should be called, not, it's not my notion, it's from, uh, it's a school, schoolification is in my point of view. And I, I don't want to do schoolification really, because I think uh, people should be free to do whatever they like with the, with the package or the project. And so technically I can't come up with, with something which makes sense from a from a from a, a didactical point of view but uh, whoever has 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 some idea well, there are as i said there are lots of ideas but they need to be crisp and bring things really forward and not in, in, not just not just uh, looking what what's 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 going on in the in the in the games industry and and, and copying that because that there are lots of issues there as well so yeah no, and so there should be just more puzzles and, and go more content and, and maybe maybe something easier. Oh, I'm taking too much time, but maybe something easier for the grammar school thing. That, that, that I'm, I'm talking to a friend of his, a teacher of physics, and maybe we can do something there. So in, in, that, in that space, I would, I would progress. And uh, there was, uh, Edward did mention in the uh, in Discord Q&A chat um, that he would be a willing volunteer as a, as a student to kind of give you some feedback on that as well. So, Oh man, that's, that's good. That's so nice. That's really nice. Yes. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, obviously the pig is working. Uh, oh, sure. Sure. It does. <laughs> no doubt about that. Excellent stuff. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and I think we're out of time for questions now. Well, it's nice to wrap up on time. Thank you. Thank you.